Every single organism on Earth can be split into prokaryotes or eukaryotes, or cells without membrane-bound organelles and cells with membrane-bound organelles, like a nucleus. Eukaryotes include things like animals, plants and fungi. But they also include some things that don't fit into those categories neatly. These are protists. Any eukaryote that doesn't fit into these categories is a protist and a member of the fourth eukaryotic kingdom, Kingdom Protista. Well, it's not a kingdom exactly, it's more like a mixing pot, containing possibly hundreds of thousands of eukaryotes that just don't fit in. They're found all over the world in all sorts of different places, from the depths of the ocean to your stomach. And there are so many of them that their global biomass is estimated to be twice that of all animals. Most protists are unicellular and can be as small as bacteria, while some have evolved into multicellular organisms, such as the giant brown alga kelp. Some reproduce sexually and some asexually. Some are autotrophic and make their own food, while some are heterotrophic and can't make their own food and some are something in between. Some can move and some can't. And even though they're found all over the place and are part of so many interactions in their environment, we still don't know much about them. Which actually is surprising because protists were the first microorganism identified down a microscope. But why should we care about protists? Protists interact with other organisms in a wide range of ways. These can be harmful or helpful. Whilst one type of protist is the microbe responsible for malaria, another is found in the hind gut of termites and helps to digest the wood particles, releasing carbohydrates, keeping the termite alive. These interactions can affect human, animal and plant health. For example, free-living amoeba are protists that prey on bacteria. But some bacteria have developed resistance to being digested and can survive inside the amoebae. These bacteria are then protected from any attacks on them, which can be dangerous for us. Research has shown that a commonly used hospital disinfectant, sodium hypochlorite, needs to be four times more concentrated than normal to kill the bacteria hiding out in the amoebae. It's also worrying for the development of antimicrobial resistance, so we need to better understand this relationship between protists and their prey. Protists are really important in environmental health. A wide range of protist species are found in marine environments and are huge contributors to the photosynthesis cycle. In fact, it's estimated that protists may produce up to 50% of the world's oxygen. Protists are also useful in helping us to understand how life evolved. Coanoflagellates are protists believed to be the closest living relative of animals as we know them today. Understanding how they developed might help us to begin to understand the evolution of multicellularity. So, due to their roles in health, the environment and our own scientific research, the importance of protists can't be underestimated. And to fully understand our planet, we can't forget about these heavy lifters of the eukaryotic world. So in whatever field you're studying, or whatever you're learning about, you should care about protests.